Hello there Akuma fans, this is Charlie with the Gossiker Application staff with another tip for you today. We are going to work on tool life management. This is a request from a customer and uh, I've been a little lax lately on getting new videos on the web but let's go ahead and do another one today. We are working on what you can see up here as a three axis mill but the tool life management function works exactly the same for all of our milling centers from Akuma whether it's a horizontal five axis or three axis no big deal the lathes do have a similar function but that will be another video at another time so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this program the there are some slight differences that we need to take into consideration when we're writing a program for tool life management and I will show you exactly what they are. The first thing to take notice of is this command right in the beginning of the program that says TLFON tool life function on. Basically all this is doing is telling the machine that we are going to be using the tool life management for this program or for this period of machining turns out that once you've expressed TLFON one time it will remain in the on position until somebody cycles power on the machine however I put it in the beginning of the program not just to uh, flip on the function on the machine but also let the operator know that hey I'm using tool life function so let's do it a couple of other things that we ha must do to our program You'll notice that here on our G56 call, if you uh, look in your manual, you'll see that G56 is the command to read the height offset for a tool. Generally, post processors will do something like this, where the H number that you're reading, the offset for that tool, height offset, will match the tool number that's standard. However, because we're going to be using tool life management, we can now no longer tell the machine a specific number of offset to read. So by using the letter A, we're now specifying that I want the machine to look at whatever tools in the spindle and automatically apply the offset that corresponds with that tool number. This is kind of a handy function even if you're not using tool life management. I can't count how many times I've had an operator at the machine take a look at my program and say hey uh, tool 1 is a spot drill. I already have a spot drill in tool number 11 so I'm going to change his program and rock on. Well they forget that they need to change this G56 if it had been sent to the floor with G56H1 and they changed it to tool 11, now you're using tool 11 but you're applying offset 1. That's uh, generally not very good. So I like to make every program read HA regardless of whether I'm using tool live management or not. That's number one. Now I'm going to skip over the next tool to show you that G41 is exactly the same thing. A cutter compensation function should be the same sort of thing. Instead of saying G41, this is tool 4, instead of saying G41 D4, which a normal post processor or a hand programmer would logically put in there, we are going to omit the tool number and just put the letter A, which means, just like the G56, I want you to apply the cutter compensation that's directly related to whatever tool happens to be in the spindle right now. Delightful. Now, is uh, Akuma understands that there are circumstances where you might want to have multiple offsets for a single tool, height offset or diameter offset. You know, perfect example of this is in a cutter compensation perhaps you have one dimension that you're cutting that is plus nothing minus a, a, a thou and cutting a second dimension on this with the same tool that is plus a thou minus nothing so now uh, you have to have two different cutter compensations in order to make those two features accurately so they do also in addition to DA you can also use DB or DC and we will show you where those are logged in so you're not locked into just one offset if you're using the alphanumeric character you do have three of them dynamite next thing I want to uh, take into consideration in my program is exactly how I want to manage the individual tool I have 
uh, the ability to track the amount of time that the tool is used or the number of parts uh, or number of cycles that the tool is utilizing. If I'm going to track with time, as I've decided to do with my end mill, there is no more, uh, there's no information required in the program other than making sure that my HA and DA are set as such. However, on my drill, I am going to track it by the number of holes that are made. So here's my 10 millimeter drill that I'm going to use to punch 10 holes and I'm going to track it by the number of holes that are made so you'll notice at the bottom of the page or at the bottom of that that block TLCO tool life count and then a Q that represents the number of cycles or the number of counts that I expect the tool to make or that the computer to make excuse me since I've made 10 holes I have a Q10 if you are deciding to just track by number of parts made you can omit the Q, no big deal. But since I'm doing number of holes, Q10, boom, if you omit the Q, then it's simply going to select, or it's going to increment the counter one cycle per time that the, uh, the tool exits the spindle. That's it for my program. So I'm going to select that. And let's buzz over to our tool data tab and probably haven't seen this because well if we're not if we don't understand tool life management we probably haven't ventured over to this side of the control but let's go ahead and touch the tab in the upper right hand corner that says tool so now I'm over on my tool life tab and it's showing me the four tools that I have installed in my magazine just to breeze back over to magazine info you see I've got tool two in the spindle one three and four are in my magazine other than that it's empty that's why I'm only seeing these four tools here the four that I'm using for this particular program currently the management mode this little column right here is set to not manage it's it's not doing anything so I'm gonna zip back over to my program in automatic mode I'll hit cycle start and we'll see exactly what this program does it simply picks up the first tool We'll notice right here it's tool number one our spot drill and it runs through spotting 10 holes it will uh, then pick up the 10 millimeter drill and do 10 holes and then the end mill picks up and does a uh, mills a little five uh, five inch square I believe it was five inch I'm gonna zip back over to tool data while this is running just to show you that nothing is is updating over here there, there's nothing going on because we're in this not manage mode over here in spite of the fact that we use that TLCO command in our program or TLF on sorry and also this TLCO because we're in not managed mode on tool life nothing is being updated so now it's going to run over and grab our half inch end mill and do a little buzz around the outside. Notice that D is set to four because that's the uh, that's the tool number that's in the spindle. Even though I said D A, it knew. All right, tool four, offset four, good to go. So now we've run through the program. We see what it does. We're going to add some tool life management to us. Let's look at our first tool number, tool number one. And we're not going to manage that in any way. I, it's a center drill. I'm happy with it. I'm going to leave that alone. However, our second tool, tool number two, is a half inch drill. And we do want to manage that guy. Uh, it was supposed to be a 10 millimeter drill. That's, you knew what I meant. So I'm going to pop over here to the management mode, highlight it, and then use the F1 key to bring up the menu. Here are my choices time with a spare, time in general without a spare, and then the count both with and without a spare. Now I've decided that I want to use the count with a spare for this so I'll just tap that. As soon as I highlight, uh, as soon as I change it to managed mode count spare you notice I get set left options that show up on the screen. This is how many holes is this tool K 
capable of making or how many parts depending on how I programmed it. In my case it is the exact number of holes. Now here's a little footnote for you to stick in your memory bank. This thing will count down but will not um, it will not register a broken tool or a timed out tool until the set the left the remaining number goes into the negative so if you want to do 10 holes then I'm gonna set that to be one less it's got to go into the negative so I'll set it for nine pieces and left is how many are remaining. If this tool is not brand new, I could lie to it and say, eh, I've only got five holes left. In this case, no, I'm good. It's a brand new tool. So now it's set. I can make nine pieces and I have nine remaining. And now my bar graph has completely filled in. That's a nice little indicator of how much life is left on the tool. Last thing I need to do is come over to my group number. That's what G number is and I have to assign this tool a group. I could make it uh, correspond with the tool number, such as T number two is uh, the primary tool in this group. I could say this is group number two, but I'm not tied to that. I could also just simply say that, okay, this is uh, group number 10. It just doesn't matter. As long as all of the tools that I intend to use as spare tools also get stuck in group number 10. So let's click down to my next block, the next tool, tool number three, which should also be group number 10 because it's the same type of drill. This one we will also manage by, by count and because these are the same type of drills I'm going to repeat exactly what I had done previously. Nine, nine holes available for each. On this side we have the original and the spare column. If you set this tool as the original, that means that if this thing is timed out, it will go pick up the spare tool just as we had hoped it would. But as soon as this tool is repaired, it will stop using this and go back to the original tool. Now we're gonna come down to our final tool, tool number 11, and we will manage this by time we're not going to use a spare because we don't have a spare in the machine. We're just going to say time. That way when this thing uh, expires, when this tool expires, the machine will simply alarm out. Now I need to set the amount of time that this is able to be used. Let's just say this is a 10 minute tool and we have remaining 10 minutes. Now it's populated my bar graph, everything's set to go. That's all there is to do in terms of, of setting data for the tool. Now that we've done this, we're gonna go back to our main screen and we're gonna hit cycle start and start to making some money here. So just as before, it picks up tool number one and it spots the holes. Bouncing back over to tool data, you don't see anything specific going on here yet. But no problem, it's uh, because we're not managing the initial tool. Once it gets to the end, we're uh, end of the spot drill cycle, now we're gonna pick up tool number two, and you'll see it occur here. There's tool two is next. Now it's in the spindle, and it's going to go and start popping. Now, we did call tool two, and because it was not expired, that's what got put in the machine. Now that we see tool number two is in managed mode as count, once this thing gets to the tool count column, I'm going to slow down the machine so that we can talk about it. There it went. I'm gonna slow everything down and come back over here and you'll notice that, whoops, look at this. Because it punched 10 holes, now it is in the negative it has flagged this tool as no good to expired on life. Awesome. Now, as a footnote, you'll also notice that, hey, our uh, end mill is sitting here counting down because it's currently running. Let's go ahead and speed this back up. As, my, as an operator, I don't have to pay attention to the fact that one of these tools, our uh, drill, is now timed out. 
without even knowing that anything happened, I put in another part and I hit cycle slam and off and running. We're going to do our spot drill just as normal and our program still says after this uh, after the spot drill it still says T2 M6 or G116 T2 depending on whether or not you're using the tool change macro but because that tool has timed out we're gonna see something a little different happen right here instead of picking up tool 2 there's tool 3 now you can understand why it needs the HA because the program said 2 and it picked up tool 3 and why because tool 2 is in no good status as soon as we are done with this uh, this drilling cycle I'm gonna slow down the machine one more time so that we can talk about it and we're up slow it down and come back over to the tool data page now they are both timed out. There's our, our countdown occurring with the end mill. So this brings up the next question. What happens when we run out of tools? Now, I, as an operator, I've been working for nine and a half hours and I'm a little sleepy and I haven't noticed that these tools have timed out. And I just went ahead and loaded another part and hit cycle start. Because the spot drill is still good, it's going to take off and start moving. But as soon as we get to the drilling cycle, we are going to put the original tool back in the spindle. But as soon as it does, we're going to get an alarm telling us, hey, nope, this tool is no good. And we come up. It looks for something in that tool group. Since it didn't find anything, it put the original in and gives me active tool no good 5601 right, let's talk about the last issue which is what do I do about this so what am I gonna do about this the the tool is no good first thing to do is to pull the tool out of the machine and replace it obviously then I'm gonna come over to my left category set that to whatever the total number of uh, parts available are and I'll do that for both of these since I just replaced them both. Now that I have tools remaining on, uh, on the counter, I can simply come over to the OK No Good column and reset the tool from No Good to OK. And now we're ready to rock. Occasionally, I've had people that put a drill in there. Oh, I only have five pieces left to go, and this this tool is not brand new. It's perfectly acceptable for you to put fewer number of holes available than a brand new tool if necessary. You'll notice that the bar graph is reflecting that there are not. This is not a brand new tool. I hope this helps you out. All of this information is covered in the special functions manual that came with the machine, section 21, tool life management function. It covers everything that we just spoke of, including setting the tool data and setting your program or modifying your program to use tool life management. If you need any further assistance on this, please feel free to reach out to your local Gosker application staff. We're here to help you. Thanks.